let me first and foremost just welcome everybody to Loudoun County this morning. Uh, you are in the Ashburn District of Loudoun County. Uh, it runs from the Potomac River back to the Greenway and to Goose Creek over in that direction. But let me first of all just thank uh, the Metropolitan Washington Consulate Governments and the National Capital Region Transportation Planning Board for hosting this at this site today. Uh, I think you can see with the trucks going by what happens here all day long. And I think the trucks are indicative of what we see from a safety perspective here. Uh, the speeds you are seeing at the moment are not indicative because we have the sheriff here. <laughs> He's right here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and all of his good deputies are behind me here. So uh, we're seeing lower speeds today. I want to thank Sheriff Chapman for being here. Uh, Delegate Tag Greason wanted to be here today. He represents this particular uh, district in the House of Delegates. Unfortunately, he had to leave abruptly on uh, business travel. I want to thank Paul Gilbert of the uh, Northern Virginia Regional Park Authority, uh, VDOT for being here, by Gladden for being here, and just everybody being here on a very nice but a little bit chilly day. Um, the real reason we're here is to get the word out. And we'll, Let's talk about Loudoun County for a minute first. What What is the issue we're really facing, and not specifically here, but with all of our pedestrian and bicyclist infrastructure and our road infrastructure? And it's simple, it's growth. At the 2000 census, Loudoun was 182,000 people. At the 2010 census, Loudoun was 312,000 people. So that's all about a 75% growth rate in a decade. Today, in 2012, we estimate we are at 330,000 people, and we estimate build-out to occur by about 2040 at a half a million people, all right, 500,000. So that's kind of what we're facing, so it's this continued growth, and it's a challenge for us to continue to build infrastructure. The solution to this problem right here is having a crossing that's not a grade. That's the real solution, and I think everybody can agree with that. But the problem we face is the ultimate condition of this road right now in the county's comprehensive transportation plan is four lanes and 150-foot right-of-way. That's true of all of Belmont Ridge from Route 7 to Croson Boulevard, which is down by Briarwoods High School. Most of that has funding, but this segment right here, from that light back there to where it goes four lanes, does not have any funding. So if we were to build a non at grade intersection, we'd have to tear or a bridge, we'd have to tear it up again when we ride in the road to four lanes. So that's really our issue. Now, what is our issue right here? We have a very unique situation. We have a crosswalk in a 45 mile an hour speed limit zone. You don't see many of those. If you go to the next road over where the WNOD crosses on Ashburn Road, that's a 25 mile per hour speed limit right next to a fire and rescue station, by the way, that slows people down as well. So you've got a very unique situation. Furthermore, traffic studies have shown people don't go 45 miles an hour here. The average speed through this section of Belmont Ridge is 52 miles an hour. So when we base it on that, as you can see, we have curves. You can't really see where you're coming from. Uh, we've got a very dangerous situation. There's been numerous players involved. I really appreciate their help. Uh, I want to thank my staff, especially Dory O'Brien first, but NVRPA has been a big help. This was parking right here just a couple months ago. It was not real parking. It was makeshift parking. People just parked their cars here. Well, what was the problem with that? They, they did it on the other side. What was the problem with that? The sight line. As people are coming, you couldn't see if there were bicyclists or pedestrians approaching the crosswalk. So I want to thank NVPR, NVRPA for putting the fences up, for clearing the trees and the shrubbery. We're also going to do a couple other things here. There's confusion in the code, in the state code. One thing people don't always recognize is that bicyclists are pedestrians in a crosswalk, whether they are mounted or dismounted. Let me say that again. Bicyclists, mounted or dismounted, are pedestrians and to be treated as pedestrians on a crosswalk. So we have an education issue there. We also have confusion in the code as to when somebody is actually entering a crosswalk. And as you can see, there are stop signs, but those stop signs technically, according to the Commonwealth Attorney, are not enforceable because they would actually have to be in the right-of-way, which means they'd have to be basically almost in the road. And you can't do that, because that would be dangerous. So I've asked Delegate Greeson to carry some legislation forward in the General Assembly in January to clarify the code regarding pedestrians and motorists and 
and crosswalks. We may limit it to speed limits of 40 or 45 or more because we don't want other unintended consequences, but Delegate Greeson has agreed to carry that legislation for. We're doing some other things here at this particular site. We are shielding the pedestrian signs. If you are coming from the south, heading north, those signs right over there are halfway pointing towards the motorists and they say stop. Guess what? Some of the motorists stop, even though nobody's at the crosswalk. So we're going to hood those signs. Uh, and let me just interrupt Mary Beth. We have Mary Beth Greason here. That's uh, Delegate Greason's wife. So thank you for being here. I didn't see you. He's over. really excited about carrying the legislation. Great. Thank you so much. We're going to put up kind of a new experimental uh, technology called rectangular rapid flashing beacons, RRFBs, and they will be pedestrian activated from both sides of the trail. And when the pedestrian activates it, it's somewhat similar to a crosswalk, but what happens instead is we will have almost, they're almost like strobe lights. And they will be, you will be able to see them at a great distance, and motorists will know that there is a pedestrian at the crosswalk ready to enter the crosswalk and cross, and they will know that from quite a distance ahead. Um, the bottom line here is we're really trying to be proactive. We have not had a pedestrian incident at this particular crossing yet. We have had many, many rear-end collisions here because cars sometimes abruptly stop even when there is not a pedestrian present. We've had cars come through these woods, try not to hit the car in front of them, so we're looking to clear that up. I'm very pleased by the way the various entities, County OTS, VDOT, NVRPA are working together. And I think what we're doing here really could serve as a model for other trail crossings. I learned today, just before we started today, that there are, the NVRPA has 70 crossings that they're responsible for on the WNOD. And we know it starts way in Western Loudoun, right in the terminus, right in downtown Percival, and continues through Loudoun and Fairfax and Arlington to D.C. So there's a lot of similar situations, and the way the entities have worked together here, I think, can truly operate as a model for us to look at some of the other crossings. This isn't just about this crossing, though. Just earlier this morning, we had a serious pedestrian incident in Loudoun County. It happened over at Route 28 in Sterling Boulevard and resulted in a flyout. So it is happening all over the county. Just in one small area of my district in Ashburn Farm, we have had five, five pedestrian and bicyclist incidents in the last eight months. I want to credit Sheriff Chapman and Captain Harpster for working with my staff. And we've sat down and we've sat down with the HOAs and we've analyzed these accidents. And there's really not a lot of common threads except one thing, driver inattention. That's the only common thread between the five of them. It has nothing to do with signs or where they're crossing. But it's driver inattention, specifically driver inattention, when motorists are making a left-hand turn or right-hand turn and not realizing there is a pedestrian or a bicyclist pre present. So the problem is much more pervasive. And we're going to try to solve it in other parts of Ashburn and Loudoun as well. But this is pervasive throughout the metropolitan Washington region. I again want to thank our host today especially uh, the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments for putting this on and putting the spotlight on this particular location and raising the awareness necessary to solve a problem before it becomes a bigger problem. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor.